Thank you. Bilal, can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, okay. Oh, no, it's always a feed like this. Okay, let's, let's see. Oh, you don't have okay, and then this is based on the presentation, so... I should understand the this matter. Okay, let's see. So, I'm going to follow the presentation, so I hope you can see it from where you sit. Um, as you see, I was asked to talk about Piyut, what was done so far, and what are the prospects for the future. Uh, so I'm, I'm, as I was writing the paper, uh, things change, and, and you will see, and I would like to do with you some share with you so, some brainstorming exercise I, I just did in the last couple of weeks concerning the, the next generation of field studies. And I just want to, to remind that uh, as, as of Fleischer uh, described it in the conference at Tel Aviv 20 years ago, celebrating the 100-year anniversary of the discovery of the Gniza, uh, that the Gniza did not, didn't change this discipline of, of Piyut. It built it from the ground up. And this is something to, to bear in mind. And I also would like to thank, of course, the organizer and also Moshe Lavi and, and for the stuff and Rai for the presentation yesterday that actually are going to, to, to dovetail very nicely with what I'm saying, especially Professor Rai, who, who gave us this most interesting tour of, of the 19th and 20th century of the study of Piyut, of poetry, of Shira, as, as you said yesterday. So I'm not going to go over these details. Once more, but one clarification, uh, what do I mean when I say piyut? I personally study late antique piyut, the so-called classical piyut, uh, which is uh, uh, 5th, 6th, 7th century in Palestine. Now, we all know that Giza is full of, of piyut theme of poetry, both uh, liturgical piyut theme and non-liturgical poetry. What I'm going to say today is relevant to both sections of Piyut, although I do focus on the earlier stages, and the truth is that the, the most of, I think, 95% of the concentration of Piyut studies are on the formative period of Piyut, rather than on later development. Of course, Piyut was very prominent also in, uh, in, in Fustat and other communities, but this is much less studied. So, so I'm going to have some sort of um, focus on the earlier materials. So I'm going to talk about, again, the major trends in PE studies in the 20th century, in recent developments, uh, let's call it in the 21st century. It's, as usual, not so clear cut, but it's, it's a good uh, divide point. And then I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, un and editable digital humanities and field studies. And actually, this is going to be the focus of my uh, talk today, because I um, think that there are some interesting things happening in the field. So a brief overview of, of the major trends of field studies in the 20th century. Uh, the major effort done in the last 120 years, as Professor Reif yesterday described very well, is emphasis on philology and production of, of critical editions of Piotin. We have now many, many critical editions of, of late antique Piotin, also of, of later early medieval Piotin in the East. But yet, the Zambia Bicalier is probably the most uh, good example for that. But is probably maybe the, the most renowned and most famous Python of all ages. And he wrote extensively. And until today, we have only very few of, of his poetry was published. And it's an ongoing project. I, as you heard, I myself going to publish in the coming month uh, uh, his poetry for Hanukkah. Uh, Shulamit Alitsu and Michael Rand are working on. on trying to, to present the entire corpus of the Kiliri, uh, something that will take uh, years. 
some of you may recall that Shadow Spiegel declared the thing in, in the 20s uh, that he's going to do that, but uh, it, it didn't materialize. So this is a very, very uh, uh, clear emphasis of Pew studies. Of course, Sophia Long sits here, also take a major part in the publication of critical edition, although uh, uh, Long will reappear uh, uh, also in the development in the 21st century. So this is a very uh, strong emphasis. Uh, as part of the philological work, there have been also linguistic and, and uh, structural literary um, studies of Piyut, usually in order to, to understand Piyut and in order to understand its history. Um, the, the most uh, um, important contribution uh, that sums up this school is Ezra Fleischer's 1975 book <coughs> Ashirai Ribina Benai, Hebrew poetry in the Middle Ages, where he uh, sums up his structural approach. And I, when I said structural, it's structural, not structuralist. It's not to be disassociated with structuralism, but a very a structural approach to to, to Piyut. And of course, the, the texts themselves are very structural. We have all those poetic devices anyway. This is uh, also a, a very important emphasis. Uh, there is an ongoing uh, effort to, to, to prepare indices and, and catalogs. So uh, we could start with probably Israel Davidson of Sarah Sharaba Piyut, a wonderful. Um, index of, of BOT that was published already in the uh, 1920s. And the catalog, uh, uh, the very um, also ongoing catalog of the Mif'al Hekera Shirava Piyut Bagniza, the Mif'al for the start, the center for the study of Piyut and poetry in the Gniza, now named after Ezra Fleischer, was founded by Fleischer in 1967 and contains almost 100,000 titles of, of PUT. And again, this also we show up later, and also uh, as part of work of the uh, Milona Histori, the historical uh, language, uh, dictionary of Hebrew language, language, excuse me, that also we are, it's been in the making for many, many years, um, but this is uh, until today also a major uh, tool in the study of PUT, and again, this also we come back as we continue. The study of Piyut, and again, especially a late antique or early medieval Piyut, was centered in Jerusalem. I mean, at some point, of course, it all started in Germany. And I also I wanted to mention, again, with reference to Professor Wright's lecture yesterday, that Piyut was studied well before the Gnisa. Because Tsunz was, as we heard yesterday, was heavily invested in, in Piyut. But of course, uh, the, the discovery of the Geniza changed many things. Germany was, was a center. Uh, the famous Schocken, Machon, Hekel, Ashira, Ivrit, was based in Berlin. Then moved to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was also again, a, a, a touchstone for, for, for Piyut studies for many, many years now. Things have changed as, as they do. Piyut, it must be said, is, it was always a somewhat marginal field until today's fruit. As we said, was arrived. Maybe, maybe the study of prayer is, is even smaller, but the number of scholars of Piyut in the world today, is, I mean, if we would put together a list of, of 20 people, that would be an exaggeration. So also Piyut is small and, and in, in many ways, uh, advances very slowly um, after other uh, corners of uh, Jewish studies, so to speak. One of, of the major changes in the study of Piyut, and I think this can be marked by, by Professor Yalom, 1999, that's a very neat year publication of his book, Piyut and Exiyut. Uh, Piyut and Reality or Society, in late antiquity, that was, I would say, the first uh, sustained effort to, to study Piyut as a cultural phenomenon, and not only as literary text. So 
since then, since the publication of the book, many multiple studies are trying to locate the youth in, in the social context of the synagogue, of changes in uh, Jewish society in the late antiquity, uh, and given that, that also history, historians started being interested in Piyut, people like Seth Schwartz, who, who wrote, gave Piyut a very central role, Michael Schwartz and other colleagues who are, um, again, trying to, to see that the interaction between Piyut and other realms of Jewish culture and antiquity, and also something that, that began with Professor Yalom and, and both Piyut and Matsiyut, the comparative study of, of, of Piyut, um, I uh, personally followed up on that, and much of my uh, um, work in the last decade was on various connections between Piyot, Syriac uh, poetry, uh, Byzantine poetry, and also Samaritan. So this is uh, also a, a major development in the study. Uh, we also have seen the introduction of, of I, wrote, I wrote, advanced literary uh, approaches, um, more advanced and less focused, as I said before, on the structural elements. So, for example, we have Yoshua's Granada dissertation that uses tools from narratology. My own PhD dissertation was on the figurative language of, of classical Piyut. So, so we see also development in this regard. And also, I think, a very welcome uh, um, phase of Piyut is the international expansion of the study of Piyut. And this is again something that changed in the last 15, 20 years. And people in Europe, people like Professor Wout van Becken from Groningen, for example, a student of Professor Yalom, you know, doing a remarkable job in Piyut, uh, as well as people in the United States, like Michael Swartz, I uh, uh, mentioned, uh, Laura Lieber, and uh, Michael Rand now in Cambridge, and, and Zvinovic, so there's a group of people walking all over the world in Piyot, writing in English, also a thing that I think is very, very important, again, to, in order to, to disseminate Piyot in the larger circles, and I personally, this is part of, of what I was trying to do again in the last decade. So here we get at, at the turning point of, of, of the paper, uh, to the digital humanities. Uh, I will devote now two or three minutes to the philological historical tools that are already developed, and then the reminder of my talk will be devoted to some uh, um, preliminary examinations of, of, of the usage of literary hermeneutical tools to study beauty, and I will give a textual, uh, a textual example uh, concerning that. But what is more, and I don't have to say much about digital humanities after Moshe's presentation today, and later today we'll hear much more about digital humanities, so this is today, I guess, the Digital Humanities Day in our conference. So of course we have what I termed the manuscript tools, mostly at Friedberg, all you know, those algorithms, putting together manuscripts, and those tools are, are essential, and, and there, and the most immediate concentration is again on the, the philological work and the production, enabling uh, scholars to do a better job. Um, the next three projects are done um, at the moment by Avi Schmidtman from Bailan University, who is a, a specialist in field but also a computer science. And we had a long discussion last week, and it is developing right now with three tools to, to support the study of Piyut, again, in terms of, of, of working with the text for um, the publication. One is authorship uh, identification, that is, uh, uh, is building an algorithm that we, uh, you can uh, uh, put inside the book other poetry, and that the computer-based, this is not about recognition of, of the letters. It's about the style, and trying to, to and, I mean, such things uh, um, are known from other fields, not in Hebrew necessarily, but this is coming, authorship identification, and this is, uh, and in the Greece, very, very important, because, you know, we have many fragments that we cannot identify. 
Um, another uh, tool is parallels or sources identification. That is, you enter a PU into the, this uh, algorithm, and it will retrieve uh, all the uh, again parallels or sources. Uh, it depends how you define them. This is something. Uh, our own uh, project a shoot, if you will, but, but this is made out of, of, of big chunks of text. That is the idea here, that you copy-paste a, 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 a kedushta, a large composition, and you get results for the entire uh, corpus. And finally, a vocalizer, which is all the very good. That is a computer algorithm that will be able to vocalize beauty. And this is also, and, and he's reporting that he has already very good results in this uh, uh, realm. So this is coming up. These are, um, may we say, technical tools to support, again, the production of critical edition and the deciphering of text. As I said, the remainder of my talk will be devoted to some, to a, a less explored um, land of digital humanities in Jewish studies in, in, in general, though it's very prominent in other fields of study of, of poetry. And these are uh, tools that can actually help scholars to analyze text, again, from the literary and perspective, using uh, co computers. So I'm going to give you an example. So, so I, uh, and this is also new to me, and I, I owe a great debt to Itai Marindon Milikovsky, who completed his dissertation on, on again, narratology and in, in the Talmud wrote a PhD about the Talmud and is currently at Hamburg University working on a digital humanities um, project with a tool that I will uh, talk about in a second. And we, we, for many years, we knew each other, read together PUT and Midrash also and uh, joined the project with Moshe Lavi of, of trying to rethink the relationship between Pewt and Midrash. Anyway, uh, this is the uh, first attempt to, to use such tools in order to, to analyze them. So what I did, I took, I, I took two Pewt team of a very specific genre, of the, the Tkieta. Tkieta is a specific genre for Rosh Hashanah, for the New Year. And these are piyutim designed to be uh, um, performed during the so-called shofar service. And it has a very complex um, liturgy, but it's, it doesn't matter. What matters uh, for us right now, it, there is a section that is devoted to malchut, melucha, kingship. And so, so the, the, the text of the prayer and the piyutim follow the, the, the notion of melucha. This is an example of one of the earliest examples by Yosei by Yosei, the 5th century Paitan. And you can see that Melucha is, is highlighted because it ends, there is a one word refrain at the end of each verse. It follows the, the an al double alphabetic acrostic. You can see uh, uh, very highlighted in the text. So. Oh, you can't. Oh, oh, okay. oh it's that stuck. Oh. You, you didn't see anything until now. Yes. Oh, you were so quiet. <laughs> oh, we were so uh, It's only about the next generation. Okay. <laughs> now I see. You missed all the nice nights. Okay. You're so polite. Okay. There we go. This is the, the until now it was all, all text. Now, okay. I can send it to you so you can look later on the nights. Okay, Voya. This is Yosei, but Yosei Voya is, is a, a, a text, a, 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 a website, a see through your text that analyzes text. This is, so this is, now you see that the Malchuyot by Yosei by Yosei, you see the acrostic on the right, and, and so these are two, two strokes of, of the Piyut. And I wanted to compare it with, with a similar text by Azor de Rabbi Kalir and uh, one of the predecessors, uh, the seventh century, and because he also he really follows this this uh, paradigm of, of the essay. And what I did with the text is, is that there is a tool called Word Cloud. The computer takes the entire text and produces a cloud. You have seen this before. 
of, of, and, and the cloud is built of, of, of different sizes, you don't see it yet, right? According to the frequency of the words. Okay, so, so now we don't need the computer you know, to, to know that Meluchah is going to be very prominent, right? So, so the, as big, as, as the word is bigger if the frequency is higher. Okay, so this is a, a word cloud. But again, this, I mean, we all knew that even before the computer, right? So I threw in also a Lazarbi Rabikalir's text, which you can see Rabikalir already is using a, a rhyme, so you see that it's rhyme, Malki, Beit Alchi, Ba'amlichi, and Ba'imloch at the end. And when we analyze this text as well, we get more or less the same picture. Yum loch, yum loch, yum loch, melech, all this word appears time and time again. What is more interesting now, I, I should say, uh, uh, in addition, that this tool usually is, is doing what Moshe referred to yesterday, and it's well known of distant reading. That is the ability to read large quantities of text in order to highlight things that you simply cannot see in a close reading. So, what I did is I took out, there is a way to tell the computer, okay, take out these specific words because uh, uh, it's not interesting uh, to know. And, and then when I did this, and I wrote those PUT, I read them, you know, for, for hundreds of times before, it turns out that one of the most, well, not one of the most frequent words in this is key. Word key. And again, I, although these are not big team, I don't think that it, it, it ever occurred that this is the, the, the central word and it means many, many times. So this says something about the, the rhetorical structure of the beauty and, and something that, that can be pursued to See, and this is, so, so on, on, on your right you see the, the, the analysis of Yosei on the left of Azadim Rikalim and then a, a combined picture of both. So we, we can see that the two of them use this word very frequently. But I'm thin, I, how can I, I'm going to, it's, it's I'm two sorry, minutes. I didn't know this. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's <laughs> So, so this is something, I mean, if I would go one step forward, I would, uh, would go and look what is, the, what is the function of the key. This is also very interesting after we, we, we reveal that key is so important. Now, I'm not saying that specifically this key is, is going to be a key to some very major study. <laughs> but the point is that we can see things that otherwise would be very hard to see. And again, this is a very, very small text. I could put inside all your say and your say, right? and see interesting things. I mean, there are many, many parameters. I'm just focusing on the two small thumb. The next tool is Katma. This is uh, from Hamburg. And this is a more sophisticated uh, tool of, of tagging. I'm not going to go into all this. But, uh, so I put, again, of the, the two tags into Katma. And, and then you can see, actually, how this key functions in the PU. And, and this is interactive. Now, well, if you can see, this is only a, a, a screen capture, but this is interactive. You can, so I, I'm just going to, to, to exemplify what you do if, if you, you, you click one of them. Um, and before that, that's another interesting thing to see where the key is located. And this is the distribution of, of, of the, those key sections in the two tags. And again, we can see that it, they're not function the same way, that is the Kilimi is using key in a different way and, and again this, this was interesting and I, when I set out to see you know what is the explanation for that and I used the tool on the right you can see so this is for example a, a, a tree of key in in the zombie clear and then you can see that because the, that in the Kalir the key always appeared at, at right before the end of, of the verse. For example, since we don't see it very clearly, yes, I'm trying, can you yes. explain what we see on the yeah, Yes, I'm, try, yes I'm, I'm also not seeing it very well here, so in a second. What we see here 
is that the computer generated the tree of, of the word key. And now, whenever one uh, um, points to a word, for, for example, Yeranenu, it said, Sa'al Mishmei Ma'al Yeranenu Ki Imloch. So, so we can see that the key in the case of the Kiliri is his words with, with, the, with, the, with the verb in this case. And Except for one place where the key, there is key at Nimlok, because he, he was hastened to to uh, uh, to reign. And just one example from from uh, Yosei, because in Yosei the key usually stands at the middle of the verse and, and does function as some sort of a uh, it, it has a very meaningful rhetorical function in the in, in the way the piyut is is written and understood. So a very short analysis of the usage of ki shows us that, that very clearly that each, each one of, of the examples function in a different way, although with the same word in different positions. And again, um, this is only to exemplify the ability of, of working with text in a digital way that can open new avenues that otherwise will be harder to decipher. Of course, everything can be done manually. And I personally have tagged manually the entire pre-classical corpus as part of my uh, PhD dissertation. It took a long time, and I'm really curious what would have happened if I would have used one of these tools, which are very powerful. And very briefly, another word was Shemesh. Uh, and I didn't know what to do with Shemesh. Why is Shemesh so prominent with Melucha? And also the computer, when I, I said, well, okay, show me where is this Shemesh? It appears. Well, why does, well, what's the connection? It turns out that it appears only in one place. This is the distribution of the word Shemesh. It appears six times in the Piyut. Only in one place, and, and there we go. It's the rhyme word, Shemesh. So we have a strophe with, with the word Shemesh. And of course, it's meaningful, but it, it, it says something different about the importance of so, so the importance of Shemesh in this case is, is, is rather limited. In that sense, and again, this can be seen very easily by this sort of analysis. And again, I, I repeat time and again, this is a very powerful tool for larger texts. I, I use small texts in order to be able to cover it all. So in conclusion, the last thing I would just want to mention are the major challenges. And the, it's very simple in, in digital humanities. We do not have digital texts. Until today, it's not part of the, of the shoot of the Responsa project, project. This is very problematic. People look for things, and people never shows up. That's a problem. We do have Magarim. Magarim is also very limited in its function. The text is not available to scholars. It's not open source. Uh, the same is true of the Mifad HaKirashor Piyu, that all, everything is cataloged there. And the access that we have is not sufficient, so I do hope that in the age of, of opening up and public domains and opening text for the, the community, as we heard so many times, will also be part of, of this institution and it will be also be part of, of Friedberg. I know that there are people are working on that. This is very, very important. If we want to work in the digital age, we need digital texts. And with that, I conclude. And thank you very much. Yeah, question, please, if there are. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Dina. <laughs> Nobody's asking. Um, could you uh, give an example of uh, the way these tools further our understanding of the poetics of the Yes. Yeah, this is very, uh, what we should do when then this Katma project in Hamburg is very useful in that. It's that I don't believe that, uh, I mean, that there is a big dispute within the internal humanities about the ability of computers to do things with artificial intelligence and be able to analyze the text for themselves. I do not subscribe to, to, to the idea that, you know, we all could retire and the computers would do all the analysis. 
especially not uh, literary or hermeneutic analysis. The, the, the point is that what, one thing that, that this system allows us is to tag the text manually. Like the rhythm in close, like traditional close reading, but then the fact that you have a tagged text, you can do all sorts of queries and manipulation and, and by that defining the poetics of part one by time. For me this is also very important for the comparative project. Because I, I would like to tag Yana Issei and, and Ephraim or Romanos and, and and to see patterns that are similar and different. So actually, the, the, in this sense, the sky is the limit as long as we know what to do and what to tell the computer to do. I think that Piyut is, is very good for that because it's very structured. And, and the corpus is big on the one, but it's not enormous on the other. So it's manageable. No, I'm, I'm asking, okay. I, I totally agree. I'm asking if the already, you know, first uh, uh, results. Ah, no, no, no. This is uh, the, the only results I have is what you saw. This is very, very uh, recent, but I am <coughs> definitely and, and, and working on that. And hopefully, and there'll be more meaningful uh, results. And if really, again, if time Marino Melikovsky is doing that, okay, but that's all. I mean, it's not, rabbinic literature is not that far. So uh, we already have an, an expert in the making. Okay. Yes, Jonathan. Let me ask about your tagging of here. Yes, uh, uh, well, Hebrew is a different, difficult language for tagging. Now, uh, uh, just a small example, because you have there, you have a step, one tag for Shemesh, and then another tag for Kashemesh. So, uh, it, one would need some kind of lexical tool to understand that Shemesh and Kashemesh is basically, yeah, the, the particle Ka is not part of the word Shemesh. Yeah, well, the, 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 you're talking, uh, as I understand, about automatic tagging. Yeah. No, I, so I, I'm, again, personally, I'm not, the people work on this very, very heavily, and then all of those algorithms that Ivan Schwinger writes do these kind of things, right? And I'm sure that there can be very major achievements in, in this field. I personally am I'm, I'm talking about taking which is much more sophisticated than that. This is uh, linguistic. I'm interested in rhetorical and literary and poetical uh, tagging that uh, such things uh, uh, exist in, you know, in, in, in other languages, Latin poetry or English poetry, because a lot of people are working on that. So I'm, I'm not waiting for the computer to be able to tag for me the text. That would have been nice. So, and, and, and the part, the, 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 excuse me, the project in Arburg is trying to combine manual tagging but by real scholars with, with, with their uh, reading capabilities and digital analysis of the tagging. But, but automatic tagging, this is something else. There are uh, experts in this room for that. So I'm, I'm not looking into for, for automatic tagging of, especially not PUT. Yes. My question is about tagging, too. Um, because we deal with this at Princeton Years Project. We've been doing this right now. Tagging by its very nature when it's done manually. And we, we know mostly tag at this point our descriptions, right? It's embedded out. Um, it's always going to reflect the interests of the scholar doing the tagging. So in a way, the tags are nice because they're a kind of map of the current research. On the other hand, there's a lot that's not going to be reflected in the tags. So how do you deal with that problem? Again, maybe I'm, I'm not uh, uh, develop a sophisticated approach to digital humanities. Uh, what you're saying is also descriptive of, you know, of what each scholar is doing even today. That is, you know, I read PU one way, take it one way, and also I don't read it the other way. So in this sense, this tagging is very personal in a way, in the sense that it reflects definitely, but it, it develops a new, new sens sensibilities to the way we read text. That is, it's not only technical, it's not only, you know, I did it manually and now I'm going just to, to, to put it in the computer. The very notion of, of, of this massive tagging of text is already changes uh, the paradigm. And, and I think that if we do advance in the, the, the direction of, 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 of most of these platforms, uh, we like very, very heavily on, 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 on shared projects and people so, so they actually in Katma, they encourage multiple tagging. So, you know, I tag it and it's online and you tag it and others tag it. And then the, the tagging itself, as you said, 
said something. So, so in a way, it's also some sort of hermeneutical tool. So again, I'm, I'm not talking about systemizing, tagging like done in other databases. This is critical for other projects. As a literary and, and scholar in, in this regard, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, this is, it goes in a different direction. It's interpreted it, yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's just, a, it's, it's a new sort of, of, of you know, a mode of interpretation of hermeneutics, and then there's also a, a lot of developments philosophical developments concerning what is a text, now it is digital. I mean, again, we are really in the periphery of, of, of the steel of digital humanities, especially in those frontiers of, of looking at digital tools as part of, of interpreting uh, examples. So this is, uh, for me, this is very exciting, I must say. Again. So, so is all your text and tagging on Katma? Can I now enter that the website and find all of your database there? Well, okay. there's, there's nothing. Uh, well, you could see my, my tag. Well, I, I didn't even tag the, 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 this monthly note. But yes, I, I think that's what we should do. And many things are open, and I, I actually think that's a good thing. Again, Butte was, wasn't always characterized by, by dissemination, is it dissemination of knowledge, but that. Uh, this is changing, and I think uh, we're we only going to benefit from that. So yes, in theory, you know, when it's up there, I'll send you the link. Yeah. And you can uh, re-tag uh, my tagging. For coming tagging. Thank you very much. Thank you. We should come back again at 10 